Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Defence and Military Veterans says there is a shortage of soldiers and military equipment at South Africa's poorest borders between Zimbabwe, Mozambique and Botswana. The committee is currently doing inspections at boundaries between South Africa and its neighbouring countries. It says the perimeter fences are dilapidated, making it easier to smuggle contraband, move stolen vehicles and for the entry of illegal immigrants. Now, in addition, in recent months, the committee has also raised concerns at the level of training of army personnel, as well as the poor state of their technology and equipment. Cyril Taba, the chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Defence and Military Veterans, joins us now to discuss this. Chairperson, thanks for being with us. Welcome to Morning Live. Um, I, I just want to double check. I can't seem to hear you. Perhaps you're on mute, but let's try again. Yeah, thank you very much. My apologies. Thank you very much uh, for welcoming me. No problem. Thanks so much. Thanks very, very much for being with us. So our borders, from what I read in the introduction and what people have experienced, don't sound like they're in a great shape at all. Give us an idea of what you found while doing these inspections. Well, thank, thank you very much. Um, over the weekend, uh, we flew over the, the border, borderline uh, between um, uh, South Africa and Botswana, um, uh, South Africa and Mozambique, uh, South Africa and, uh, and, and South Africa and, so, and, and, and between South Africa and, and Swaziland. And um, what we picked up is that, I mean, the border between South Africa and uh, Botswana, there isn't so much problem there. Where there is a, a serious <coughs> a problem is between Mozambique and, uh, and, uh, and South Africa and, uh, and that part between um, uh, <coughs> South Africa and, uh, and, and Swaziland. In, in the border between Mozambique and, uh, and, and, um, and South Africa, we picked up in the last two years that so much uh, transgressions are happening there. For example, uh, last year, uh, a total value of uh, 28 million rand uh, cars were actually recovered that were destined to be crossed over to, to Mozambique. And this year, that uh, value increased to 48 uh, million rand. And uh, those are the cars that were recovered. We are not talking about th those that uh, our defense uh, 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 force uh, soldiers were unable to uh, recover. So that it tells you how much uh, problem there is uh, along the border. Mm. And what worsens uh, or even compounds the problem is that we have uh, communities that are closer to, to, to the border that are virtually, virtually um, <clears throat> you know, uh, finding it easy to cross uh, from that border into, from, from Mozambique into South Africa, mainly for things you would consider as, um, as, 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 as not, you know, like for, for schooling activities, some even draw pension, <coughs> pension grants from South Africa. Others, they come into the country for uh, health uh, services. And so that makes it difficult for our soldiers to stop those people because they see these services as, close, as closer to them. So, so they must make a call now to say, okay, this one is coming into South Africa for because he or she is a student, for example. And they must keep a register and regulate the whole flow of students uh, coming from that side into in, into South Africa, and the elderly who come from you know to seek a, a, you know a healthcare and 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 draw uh, social grants and so forth. So that is a difficult uh, problem, yeah. and uh, included in that are people then who are taking advantage of the situation to smuggle contraband goods into in, into South Africa and uh, DACA and uh, drugs and so on and so forth. That's a major problem. And we also experienced it as we moved to between Swaziland and, uh, and, 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 and South Africa. Botswana, it's fine. Yes, there are challenges. But Botswana, it's not a big of a, 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 a what you call, it's not a, a, a much of a, a, a headache to our, our soldiers. And, and that actually stretches the resources that we have deployed on the ground. And uh, with the budget uh, going down, it increases 
the stress on 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 the boots on on, on the ground. I thought I should just uh, say those things uh, yeah. earlier. And it really is it, it it really is worrying because with such porous borders as you've expressed, there's, you know, it 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 becomes a risk for South African citizens. I mean, vehicles being stolen at such a high rate, um, perhaps drugs coming through. Not to mention the illegal citizens that are walking in between the countries. And I mean, we've heard stories about particularly that fence that was built in uh, between Zimbabwe and South Africa. I mean, the amount that was spent on it, uh, in uh, tens of millions if not more 37 or even more than that million rand spent on a fence that is at this point absolutely useless and to add fuel to that there is no patrolling because it doesn't seem that the defense force has the capacity and what we're reading recently the funds or money to actually be there so i mean this this is actually a dire situation it's what i'm hearing bigger than we are led to believe Yes, um, Leon, uh, let me tell you uh, what we saw. Uh, yes, the, 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 the fence, um, you know, uh, the South African fence, like you said it, is not in a good uh, state, whereas even the fence that was installed uh, just recently, a couple of months ago in this year by the Department of Public Works, is the Department of Public Works that is responsible for the infrastructure along the borderline. A third of it, a third of it, was almost was down literally down and uh, it, that speaks, speaks to the quality of the fence that was put up by the department of public works at huge cost and uh, it's it's it concerns is very concerning and what is even more concerning Lian, is that the, the, the i'm not one i don't want to talk to speak ill about our colleagues on the other side of the fence uh, our neighboring countries the fence between Mozambique and, uh, and South Africa on the side of Mozambique, I think, is neglected. Yeah. They neglected. And uh, now, if we don't insist on strengthening our own fence, it means that um, uh, there will be no border between South Africa and, 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 and Mozambique, for example. And two, it's, it's lack of cooperation between the authorities on the borderline on that side. You know, our, 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 our soldiers are finding it extremely difficult because of they, they are not uh, cooperating. I mean, as soon as your car crosses through, through the border, that's the end of it. You're not going to get it. If you are lucky in the end and you are able to find it, because they even keep the registration of the vehicle even when it's on the other side. If you're lucky and you're able to get it, hey, you are in for another challenge. They will make you pay not less than 50,000 rand. If you're lucky, 30,000 rand uh, perhaps. So that's how much we are challenged. What excited us is, is, is the initiative that the, the, the government of course Nadal took, where they installed those um, Jersey barriers. And um, it's for now, they're starting with about eight kilometers at a tune of about uh, 40, 50 million rand. And we saw it for ourselves. At least we're not stopping people from crossing over because not, it's not the mandate of the department of, uh, of, of, of the government, of course, in Natal. All what they did was to at least stop cars from being uh, crossed over into, into, a, into another country because these guys, it doesn't matter even if the car gets damaged as they uh, you know uh, push it in, 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 in through into another country it, they can literally push through a fence you know yeah. and because they know when it is on, on that side it will still have some value yeah. so with this as it better has been installed it 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 is it, it, going to minimize the problem and in our report Lian, we are going to encourage that Everywhere where we have a challenge of cars being smuggled from South Africa into other countries, let's install these uh, Jersey uh, bearers. Thanks to Wazun Nadal for coming this initiative, initiative. Our soldiers had started putting borders, literally moving borders from all over uh, the province and installing them. But these guys became clever. Yeah. They use at least three cars. One car will just mesh the, 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 the border, and, and then the second cars will be able to push through. But oh. with what we are telling now, it's Chair going person, to help. You know, the things that you're telling us here, are, it's almost surreal that that's how we are protected, with boulders, boulders on yeah. a border. That, that's, that's what soldiers have resorted to now, because there isn't a proper <laughs> fence, there isn't proper <laughs> anything. So now they've had to push big boulders there to stop cars crossing the border from people stopping there, but it's not even manned. Is, is this what you, you've witnessed and seen there? 
look, it, it's not even, it, it, at least they are trying, you see, they can't be at every single square inch in the end, because with the numbers that there are on the borders, because they are also, uh, you know, uh, uh, they, 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 they are imposed on the defense force by the budget, by the ceiling on the budget. You see, if they were to have every person along the border, it means that it would be one soldier and the next soldier will be uh, 800 meters away, 800 to 900 meters away. I mean, you can't, I mean, just one soldier and the next soldier being 800 met meters away, uh, 800 kilometers, sorry, 800 meters away, less than a kilometer. I mean, it's not going to be possible. So what we are trying to resort to, because the money will never be enough. I mean, with the economy at the level at which it is now, we are looking at force multipliers. I consider the the Jersey Bears as as, as as technology as as a force multiplier, and we are also looking at drones, the usage of drones and and other things, so as to complement the work that our soldiers on the ground are doing. They are fantastic job. I mean, look, you get deployed there for six months in the to, for for status for six months and for two weeks. And uh, Sam will tell you that I've never tested the meat. I've been in this uh, in, in in this forest, and um, so 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 that's the situation that they find themselves uh, yeah. in. But what we also put in our report is to say, but public works, we understand the the the, the challenges along the border that our soldiers have to put up with. But please improve their conditions of the of the place that they live in along the borders at least they must have uh, running toilets and uh, i mean they must have no problem getting water they must their road the road infrastructure along the border must be such that they are able to move through so that uh, they don't have to change tires almost every i mean uh, every now and and, and then yeah. because of the poor state of uh, road network yeah. uh, the road the passing Along, along, along the border. But so those are matters that we're taking back with us. So, so just to, to, to put it in you know, a factual basis with regard to what the Department of Defense have, have recently said. I mean, they released their annual report and it really painted a bleak picture. Um, it says that South Africa's core military capabilities have been in decline for many, many years. I think they highlighted particularly from, from 2015 due to severe cuts to their funding. So is the National Department of Defense in a financial crisis. I mean, if we if we honestly looking at what the figures look like, what the minister has said, and what you have seen, can one deduct that they're in a crisis? Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, in the sense that um, indeed the the defence review that the department uh, conducted, you know, uh, came back and said the defence force is in a critical state of uh, decline. For example, we have prime mission equipment that uh, you know uh, needed uh, to be serviced, and uh, to service that uh, uh, equipment, you need uh, you know a lot of money, the money that is not available, and uh, you also have um, you know uh, situations where, for example, we, we we needed to service even our own vehicles. Thanks to Cubans who came and said, look, we can actually offer our capabilities. These guys, they came into the country. All you know, you, 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 if you travel, we've traveled a few uh, bases and you think it's a graveyard of vehicles. You know, dating back from before 1994. These guys, they disassemble a, a part, a, a disintegrate it, look at it, repair it, and um, and then at least they are able to uh, collect uh, space that they can use in other cars and bring and bring those cars back to life. If, for example, there are ten cars that are were declared, uh, you know, non-functional, at least they are uh, able to bring back four. Uh, out of 10, you know, four to life out of 10. So thanks to that, because they, that makes it uh, uh, those spares available, because some are no longer available uh, in, in the market, but they are able to cannibalize it, uh, you know, uh, harvest them from the cars that are lying uh, in our uh, Yards uh, throughout the country, and, um, and 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 have them uh, usable, you know, okay. in, in in other cars. So oh, I think yeah. that has actually helped at least to 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 assist and get the the, the, the military moving as 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 it were. So these are the challenges that uh, we 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 are faced. But when I said no, and it's because um, 
at least the, the defense force is able to do more with less now. Yeah. I think it, it has actually helped them to be even more efficient and we are getting that more and more. And um, so we, that's what we're actually monitoring. And um, I mean, look, now they get about 54, 54 billion rand per annum and they are overspending on on, on the compensation of uh, expenditure. That's money for salaries and um, and, 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 and and other packages for, for, for employees by over 3 billion rand. And that 3 billion rand must then come from other capabilities because it is, uh, people they can't dismiss the people that are already there because that's now their last thing that they have. Indeed. So, and Indeed. then the next thing that they did, which I much appreciative, they're now creating their own defense, defense what do you call defense force uh, works regiment. That, that they are no longer now going to go to public works for when, when there's a leakage, in the, there's, there's toilet leaking there's this to be done and they want to build that skill and capability within the defense force in in the defense force back then used to not to rely on on the department of public works a lot they would only go out or, or get department of works only when they cannot do it themselves so they're now building that capability within the department within the defense force and that will actually go a long way there. indeed well um, I think this is a, a story that needs some following up. In fact, I think um, it's, 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 it's a dire situation and one worries for the safety of South Africa as a whole with these things happening. But we thank you for giving us a glimpse into what it is that you saw on your site visit to these borders. Cyril Tabay is the chairperson of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Defence and Military Veterans. Um, they speaking about the state of the Defence Force and of course those borders between South Africa and its neighbouring countries. Thanks again, chairperson. Thank you so much, Adrian. Pleasure. So much. We uh, need to take a break, I think, here quickly. And uh, no, we're actually going to look at the question of the day. So.